And Santi Del Campo, in where are you? Barcelona, Spain. How are you doing? Oh, guys? okay. Cool. Thanks so much. Um, today on the show, we're going to chat with Santi, who's one of our newer tutors, teachers at the Demon. Um, I guess I just heard this seconds ago, but you went from a 143 to a 173. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, we'll love to hear more about that. Tell us more about you. I, I This is the first time we've talked ever. Yeah, so. I was very excited to meet you too. I, I already met Nathan uh, when we first had our interview for starting working with the Demon. And, um, and yeah, it's been going great so far. I mean, the team is great. Uh, what you guys are doing is amazing. And people are learning a lot from you. And I, I have to include myself on that because, well, I, as you said before, I started with a 143 and being able to like make that big jump was not easy at all. And yeah. being able to, you know, to use the demon as a student, that's how I actually met you guys. Like I was, I was started listening to this podcast and then I, I was listening to your advice and I thought, Hey, you know, this what they're saying makes sense. You know, it's not bad at all. Like it's working for me. So, yeah. and I thought, well, I mean, if what they're saying makes sense, I get that, I guess that their platform would also make sense, you know? So I started using the demon, uh, the free trial. I thought the idea of like being able to drill, you know, and the, all these questions that are given to you based on your performance and your level is, it's an amazing idea because it's a, it allows you to set up like your own drilling in a smart way. And you're not doing that. Like the machine is doing that for you and it helps you a lot to learn. And it's what how that that's, I, I have to uh, give credit to my, like some increase in my score to, to the demo platform. It actually helped me a lot. But, uh, but yeah, I didn't start with it right away. I started, I mean, I remember like I, the whole process took me about like five, six months to make the jump increase. And it took me, I had to take the LSAT twice. And I have to say that at the beginning, I was not expecting to, I mean, I didn't want to get into the 170s. So like the thing about, it's pretty weird because a lot of people ask me, um, why are you taking the LSAT if you're from Spain? And it kind of makes sense because it's, it's weird sometimes to have an international student just uh, taking this test to go take a JD. And it all started because I went to a Penn State law to take a master's of law. And, you know, they told me, hey, you're doing great here. You could come to uh, the JD program with us. And I said, perfect. And then they introduced me to the idea of the LSAT. I had no clue what was that. And when I was doing logic games for the first time, I was thinking, this is not the test that I'm supposed to be doing. Like I thought, I thought, yeah, I thought that this was supposed to be a, a law test or something. And now I'm, I'm putting, you know, numbers in places and it just didn't make sense to me. So, yeah, I think that the first time my diagnostic, I was just more wondering what the hell was going on instead of like trying to solve it in a way. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it was, it was pretty harsh to start with that because I had no clue what it was that about or anything. So I uh, started, I did self-studying most, most of it. Um, the key, in my opinion, for me was just to do practice, practice and more practice because I tried to like get some theory before that. So I bought some books and everything. And there were some good resources, I think. Some of them were very bad, in my opinion, also. And there was like, you know, it's like, it's like when you try to find a theory for the test, there's so many like blogs and, you know, people who start giving you their opinions. And it's like everyone's trying to give you the exact formula in order to solve it in a way, like you have to do this for sure. And everything mm -hmm. will be fine. And that's not, that was not working for me. So for me, it was basically, hey, you know, sit down, take prep tests, fuck it up, get it wrong, check out like why it was wrong and then try to improve next time. And that's basically what I did. I just took a lots of prep tests. I reviewed, spent lots of hours reviewing them. Um, my score started increasing, you know, bit by bit. And then I remember I took my first test and I got a 167, which was very good. And it was way more than I needed for Penn State because Penn State, they're like some professors told me, hey, if you get, a, if you get to the 76th percentile, you're good enough to get a full ride maybe, you know, or some consideration. I was like, awesome. And then when I, but when I got my first score, I was thinking, hey, you know, like if I made it this far, like, I mean, the test is learnable. When you start making like increase in your points, you, you, you understand that these tests can be learned. So it's not impossible, you know, there's, it makes sense kind of. So I thought, hey, if I could make it sense, if I could make a sense out of it, so I could get like a 167, maybe I could make a sense out of it to get to the 170s, basically. And that's when yeah. I started with the demon. 
And what I like about the demon the most was your approach to logical reasoning. Because logic games, I just did it by myself and I just figured it out by practicing and reviewing. It's not that big of a deal, I think. Uh, reading calm, you know, um, it's, it's reading calm. Like, <laughs> there's not like, a, I don't have like a lot of specific strategies for it apart from practicing all what you're looking for and everything. But I love the approach that you had about logical reasoning, identifying the conclusion and just like asking yourself, like just calling bull bullshit on the argument, basically. I never thought about it in that way. But when I started doing it, that actually, uh, I mean, they're not asking you all the time to find the bullshit in the argument, but what that allows you to think more about the argument, engage more with it and to have more control of it, which is at the end of the day, it's what you need. You just need a better understanding of what you're reading in order to get the, the answer choice correct. And yeah, that approach helped me so much that, you know, I was consistently being in the 170s at the end. So I took the July flex and here's where I am, I am right now. Since I got my 173, I'm very happy with that score. And thanks to you guys that you played a big part of that. So really appreciate it. Cool. Talk what, about what, your, uh, oh, go yeah. ahead, Ben. Go ahead. Uh, I was just say, what prompted you to apply to work with us? Sorry, can you repeat that question? Oh, what prompted you to apply to work with us? Well, I mean, basically like i still i kept listening to the podcast and the thing about it is that i talked with nathan about this um before my second test i mean i i had a friend who was also studying for the well who was studying for the else and she she asked me she was like in, stuck in the 150s and she was like hey could you help me because i'm not figuring this out and i said yeah i could help you you know i didn't i didn't work as a tutor for her but i just like like to help her and it also helped me because in trying to explain things to her, I was actually getting better because I was having a better understanding. And, you know, my friend told her other friend and then more people started coming. So I just like, you know, I was having like a, like a small class on my own, you know, like just starting with some people. Didn't do it like professionally or anything like that. I was just like trying to help and trying to get better myself. So, you know, I was, I'm waiting, I'm working right now here in Spain, but I also like, I'm working part time. Um, I, I was listening to your podcast and you said, Hey, we're looking for tutors. And I said, yep, I want to do that because you know, I enjoy, I enjoy teaching people. I, I think it's cool. I like the LSAT, I like studying for the LSAT. I know that a lot of people listen to this and they'll be like, you know, this guy is nuts, but whatever, it's what I like. And then your company is the one that I like the most. I mean, I've been reading about many companies and I haven't applied to, to the other ones at all. I mean, I didn't come through my mind to just oh, i'm gonna be a power score tutor or something like that you know i just thought hey i mean these guys these are the guys that i've been listening to these are the guys that i heard the advice from and what i learned from so if they're looking for tutors i mean that's what i want to work with basically cool Nathan? talk about your decision santi to um turn down your admissions to law school this cycle and reapply of course. So uh, that's another story because like when I took my first test was in October last year, 2019. And then that's when I got my 167. Um, the, I mean, the official reason for it, it's COVID. You know, like you're in Spain, you have to go to the US. Everything is like the world is ending basically. Like, um, and I was thinking, you know, like, should I go? It's a hard decision to make. But really, like what made me retake the test and wait for another cycle and just like, you know, withdraw all my applications and all the decisions that I got from other universities was basically thinking that I could get a better score at the end of the day. I mean, I'm not in a rush. I'm still young. Like I think I'm, well, you know, I'm 23 years old. I, I'm working here. I have a good life here. You know, it's not like I need to go this year or anything like that. I think that almost anyone has, like almost every, and everyone could wait for another cycle. But, uh, you know, people like to say to them, tell themselves, I have to go this year. Like, if not, I'm, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to die or something. So, but then I thought, you know, it doesn't make sense for me. Uh, I could get a better score. I'm getting like three points extra on the test. Like breaking the 170 script completely change everything. And also listening to your advice. You talked about this on the podcast a lot. You know, when you were talking about like COVID situation, you got lots of emails probably of people asking you like, hey, should I reapply, retake and everything? And um, well, I listened to that advice and I said, yeah, you could better, you could be get a better score. Um, you're not in a rush, retake the test. So I withdrew my applications and I retook the test. I'm so happy to have done that. I mean, that's, you know, one of the best pieces of advice that I've heard. And I recommend anyone listening to, 
to do the same. If you can do better in the test, retake it because getting three more points, it's like, what, $100,000 maybe in the university or something like that? Something crazy like that. So, uh, so yeah, yeah. I mean, and if you, uh, I, what, that's what I was thinking also, like, hey, if you, could, if you could get like three more points, like you could make that much money just in scholarship money. It's not that I'm making the money, but I'm getting like, you know, they're a bigger promotion code or something like that. But, uh, but at the end of the day, that's, you know, that's, that's what made me decide to like stay for one more year here and just like retake the exam. And you got six more points on your retake, right? 167 to 173. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And you're applying this cycle. Do you already have your applications in or you're working on those now? Yeah, I have my applications in. Uh, it was a little bit of a struggle to like write again the personal statement. I like a lot the one that I had. The problem with the personal statement for me was thinking like, you know, I'm a foreign student. So it's like, I want to have like a personal statement talking about my, my work experience because I already worked as a lawyer. And I think, I think that there's like lots of things that I can talk about that. Like why, you know, like what am I doing? You know, what did I learn from that? Well, all the kind of stuff that you put in a personal statement, but at the same time, you also feel that you have to touch a little bit upon why you're going to the U S if you're an international student. That's also like something that you don't hear too many people talking about that because of course, like most of the advice is made for US applicants, which makes a lot of sense. Um, so, you know, I, for foreign students, you always have to think probably about the reason that, you know, it's aligned with your reasons to go to law school in the US. So it, it was kind of complicated to draft the personal statement, but, uh, but you know, I ended, up, I ended up finishing it and I've already played to, applied to some law schools. I'm, Maybe I'm going to be applying to some other law schools in the future, but so far, like I, I have a list that I wanted to, to try and I just applied to those ones. Did you add some schools to the mix because of your six point increase? I did. I did. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not expecting to, uh, you know, I, I, I added like uh, some, let's say like top six schools, you know, to that, which I'm, I'm not expecting to get in necessarily because when I, I think that when you're an international student, no one really knows what's going to happen there, but would like to try at the end of the day. Like, you know, um, I already have the no, so it's about asking for fee waivers. And if you can get some, awesome. If you don't, I mean, if you want, really want to go to that school, just apply. That's the thing. Hmm. What uh, kind of interactions have you had so far with the other demon tutors? Well, I mean, all of them have been great. I mean, it's, it's very, it's like, so I didn't know what to expect because it is kind of like a new world for me. And um, just like the other tutors are just like very, apart from being professional on what they do, something that surprises me is that every email that I send, like all the, they all respond me in a moment. Like every, everyone is on point with everything, you know, it's, it, that's amazing. It's just like, you send an email, Hey, like, should we do this, that, and ev like, you have you spend 10 minutes and they're already answering to you which is great there's a lot of orga good organization there and they're very chill they're very nice with everything i mean i've been i've been i mean it's been very helpful um like all the sessions that i had all i would i already covered for two sessions for logic games and reading com and you know both matt and rebecca who i was covering for they they you know they wanted me to like have a meeting with them through zoom and they explained everything to me with a lot of detail just basically that and, and I mean nothing to complain about it it's all it's all great I mean there's a, a very good feeling in the in the working environment and they're very professional about it so yeah cool glad to hear that <laughs> <laughs> what classes do you have uh, on on tap what are your upcoming demon classes Santi so they asked me to take over uh, Sarah's LR basics class and I love to do that because LR it's the one that I like to teach the most I don't know why it just that just the, the the section that I like the most basically and uh and yeah I mean I I started yesterday I had my first session on, on Wednesday and it was great students were participating there were a lot of good points raised like which I mean it's a it's an hour about just having a conversation with students where all the problems are solved and also we have we kind of have a good time because it's, I think that that's kind of the approach that we're having here. I mean, I, I just, I remember when I started studying, uh, my friend gave me like a free access to a live course for another company. And there was a tutor making a live course and everything. And it was, it was awful because it was scripted basically. 
like students were not allowed to have their microphones on. Like we couldn't say anything basically. Mm. It's like, if you want to have some, if you want to like ask something, write it on the chat privately and the tutor will try to like say something. <laughs> write stuff. And they, they wouldn't say anything about that. So it was like, what is this? I mean, they, they clearly had a script. And it's completely different than what we have right now, which is basically me going through the questions and saying, hey, this is what's going through my mind, basically. And the good thing about the people working at the demon is that they, it's, it, you can see how they clearly understand what the other students are thinking. Like when a student is thinking about the question and saying, hey, I don't understand this because I'm thinking about this. The good thing is that like I'm able to to be in their shoes, right? Like say, hey, I, I've been there. Like I know how it feels to be scoring at that, you know, that score and like having that thought process and this is how you overcome it. And, uh, and it's great because we don't have a script or anything like that. We just like go through it with them and we have, you know, we just, it's just having a com genuine conversation about like how to get better at this thing. So, uh, so yeah, and uh, that's what happened with Alar, which was great. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep doing that every Wednesday same time and i'm gonna start doing another lr session for uh on monday at 9 a.m so yeah very excited for that one too awesome yeah fantastic ben anything else for santi before we let him go no it's nice to meet you i i'm glad things are going great sounds like so thanks for joining the team yeah exactly. awesome thanks to you guys for, for letting me join the team <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> Awesome. Thank you, Santi Del Campo, for coming on the show. Uh, we'll be in touch with you very soon. All right. Perfect. Have a good one. Thanks. See you. All right.